Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? So, let's get started, shall we? Um, do I have any hairs on my shirt? I talked about that yesterday, and then when I was watching the video back, I had a hair hanging off the side of my beard that drifted slowly down my shirt throughout the video. <laughs> Even though I mentioned it, um, it still happened. So I tried to check myself. Um, to make sure that I didn't have any hairs to distract from what I want to say today because I'm going to share this um, update with you guys and then I don't plan to talk about this for a while. Um, the reason that I'm filming it in my bedroom is because they are mowing outside but also because my bedroom is kind of my safe place for me. Boo Radley is sitting right over here <laughs> next to me and um, you know it's where my husband and I hang out and he watches TikToks and plays his games and I talk to the dog and we share with each other what our day is like and things like that. And, um, you know, my bedroom has been a very safe place for me for a very long time. And I wanted to do this video today um, in a safe place. So that's why I chose the bedroom. So anyway, let's get into this video. I know you guys are probably like, okay, this doesn't even matter. What are you talking about? Just bear with me. So, um... And a lot has happened in the last 24 hours, and so I'm a little nervous to make this video. I've been, I was nervous to make the video yesterday. I was nervous to make the video the day before. So let's just get into it, and um, and I and I have it, I have it uh, drafted um, in notes again. So I want to read from here, so I don't forget anything that I want to say. Um, I've been crying a lot in the last 24 hours, um, you know, and a lot of people see crying and showing emotion as a weakness. Uh, but I've always felt that it was a sign of strength to be able to cry and um, show my emotion. And, um, you know, I think that people that watch my videos are probably like, Peter, you cry all the time, right? You cry all the time in your videos. But for a very long time um, before I got sober, I was never able to cry. I was never able to show emotions. In fact, um, I used drugs and alcohol many times to allow me to um, feel emotions or share things that I didn't feel comfortable sharing. So when I got sober and um, you know I was ripped of all of that, I had to start learning how to feel emotions um, all over again. And as many of you know, there was a period after my mom's uh, death that I didn't go to meetings for about four years and had no emotional sobriety. And then I came back in. Um, I've shared the story on a lot of my other videos, but I had kind of a breakdown moment <clears throat> and I was standing in the kitchen. Um, I didn't know that this video, I was gonna share personal stuff, but I didn't know I was gonna get this personal about it. Um, I was standing in the kitchen and um, I was making a list. This was probably about 11 years ago. 11 years ago, January. And um, I was standing in the kitchen. I was making a list of things to do for the day, you know, like vacuum, laundry, fold laundry. And I got to about the fourth or fifth thing and I just lost it and I just started crying. And I called my best friend, Tanya Jean. And I said, will you please take me to a meeting? And she said, um, I've been praying for four years for you to ask me that. And so we went to a meeting that night and I've shared that story a lot in other videos that I've done. But that was kind of the beginning for me. Um, I was like a newcomer all over again, even though I had been sober for quite some years, you know, during those four years I didn't go to meetings, I didn't use, but I wasn't, you know, actively working a program and um, I was sober, but I would talk to my sponsor and I talked to my best friend, but I wasn't going to meetings, I wasn't working steps and things like that. And like I said, I had no emotional sobriety. It was a really, really uh, dark, which I know is kind of a catchphrase on YouTube, but it was, it was a really dark period of my life. Um, kind of even sometimes worse than periods of when I was using. And it was at that point that I really started um, sharing my emotions. And I remember sitting in meetings and talking about my mom. I had never really appropriately grieved my mom. And um, who in situations like this I really miss because my mom was such a wise person. And I think she'd be able to step back from the situation objectively. I don't think she would understand it. She didn't understand um, people that didn't lead with kindness. So I, I don't know that she would necessarily understand the gravity of it. But I think that she would be able to give me perspective on it. And I think the other thing is, is that 
one of the things I'm really, really trying hard to do is to see these people with compassion because I think that they're really sick people that need help. Um... I'm somebody that doesn't live with resentment or hate in my heart, and I don't want to start doing that now. And so I think that my mom, if she were here, would be able to help me with that. Um, but I'm leaning on my support system, and I'm leaning on, um, you know, a lot of people. And it was really interesting because I got a lot of comments on my vlog yesterday when I, was, I kind of referenced this video. And people said, now we know why Peter hasn't been able to sleep. I haven't been able to sleep in a very long time. I'm like, I have total insomnia and I've been struggling and trying all different kinds of things and nothing works. And um, I'm really exhausted. I'm really tired. And, um, and to some degree, I feel beat up. My husband has been such a fantastic support system to me. My sponsor, my therapist, my best friend. Um, but this has felt very lonely and I haven't shared this publicly until yesterday, what really has been going on and that this goes on daily, you know, from people reaching out to me saying, you know, like, Hey Peter, someone's trying to, you know, access your information. You know, they've been calling our office and, um, you know, to this, to that. I mean, you guys, it's constant, it's daily. So, um, I've been doing a lot of crying in the last 24 hours, but one of the things that I cry over today is that I cry over joy. I cry over happiness. I cry over love today. I think sometimes that's misunderstood or misconstrued in videos that I do um, where I feel so moved and I'm so passionate um, by joy that um, people are like, oh, Peter's always sad or he's always crying or whatever, you know? And I'm not really sure where that ever came from that this whole idea of, um, you know, not showing emotion in our society and especially, you know, like certain people shouldn't show emotion or that shows weakness. And I don't believe that. I believe that showing emotion is a sign of strength and allowing ourselves to be vulnerable enough to share emotion. And that's why I do. Um, and for those of you out there that have seen that side of me and have embraced it, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to share that side of myself on here. Um, it feels so liberating to finally be able to get all this out. And I, I just, you know, there were so many supportive comments on my video yesterday, but there were like one or two, and I'm not going to focus on the one or two, but I do want to say this, that we're just like, well, why don't you just block these people and move on? I wish I could. Um, I wish it was just that. I wish it was just some people that were making nasty tweets. Um, I didn't even get into probably three fourths of all of the things that they have done to me behind the scenes contacting people in my private life because I'm going to get into this in a second, but I've uh, kept a lot of that to myself because um, I want to hold on to that and I'll explain why in just a second. Um, I wish it was just as easy as blocking these people. I, I wish that was as, it was as easy as that. Um, but these are people that have tried to contact me and get into my life and, and you know, different ways and contacting doctors and vets and, and, and not just one doctor, but several doctors and things like that. And, you know, a lot of people were like, um, well, your doctors should know about this and your doctors, my doctors have contacted me and said somebody called today and was faking that they were so-and-so and, you know, tried to ac access your medical records. And that's how I have found out about this behind the scenes, you know, um, much of it. So. Um, but it feels really liberating to finally be able to get out, get this all out. You know, I was really nervous to, to put the video out yesterday. I honestly thought that it was going to be met with a, just a bombardment of, uh, people online, the, all the people, the trolls, the haters saying more and more things, coming out with more and more things. Um, the overwhelming amount of support that I received, uh, was just unbelievable. Um, first of all, I want to say that I know you guys are probably sick of these videos. This is the third day in a row that I've talked about it. And this will be my last one for a while. Um, and then tomorrow we will get back to the, re the regularly scheduled programming of commentary. Um, because I miss doing that. I miss doing the funny haha -ha videos and flipping my fan and singing a song and things like that. And, um, I do have a song to sing for you here in just a little bit. Um, but I wanted to give you guys an update because a lot has happened since I posted my video yesterday. Um, and, and since you guys were so supportive to watch it and so many of you left so many really unbelievably kind messages, um, I wanted to give you guys an update. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for the support. Um, these are just a few people that have made my life difficult over the last few years. Um, but I must say that this shines a light on the thousands of people who shower me, my friends, and my family, my husband, Boo Radley, Tucker, Pee Pee, 
um, with love on a regular basis. And I am so, so appreciative for your support. You, you, I don't think you really have any idea what it means to me, you know? Like, um, it's always interesting to me when I get all these comments from people that say like, oh, I'm calculating and I'm manipulative and I'm this con person behind the scenes. I literally started a book, booktube channel seven and a half years ago, you know? Um, and because in marketing my book, I had found this, you know, niche genre on YouTube called BookTube that I wanted to be a part of because I love reading. And that morphed into other channels, that morphed into other channels. I never expected that someday this would be what my life would be like, that I would be filming, you know, two to six videos a day. Um, and that I would receive so much love and kindness from people and so much support and it's unbelievable. You know, honestly, I can remember, I remember filming my very first booktube video, you know, and um, I was sitting at the table downstairs in the living room and I can remember thinking to myself, um, you know, okay, don't film it today. And I've shared the story before, but like, wait until you've lost like 30 to 60 pounds and then film your video because people will say things about your weight, you know, and I've always been very conscious of my weight and body dysmorphia. And I've talked about that on my Peter Does Stuff channel and on my Peterisms channel, and on my vlog, and on and on and on, right? Um, and then something in me was just like, you aren't going to lose the weight between now and when you want to post. Just post, just start now. Like, you want to be part of this? Just be part of this. And I've always encouraged people that when they say to me, like, I want to start a YouTube channel, but I don't know, just start it. Just pull up your phone, just start it. Like, if there's anything out there, gardening, you know, book clubs, whatever, if there's anything out there, sports, athletics, choirs, if there's anything out there that you want to be part of, start and be part of it. I think one of my biggest regrets, you know, before my mom passed away, we were able to have a really long conversation about our lives. And I got to ask her a lot of questions. And one of the things I said to her was, you know, do you have any regrets? And she said, you know, the closer you get to the end of your life, it's not the things that you did that you regret. It's the things you never tried. And, um, probably one of the best pieces of advice I've ever been given in my entire life. And um, when I look back on my life and I look back on high school and things like that, and I was so anti-establishment, so I was punk rock, you know, and um, never wanted to be part of anything. And um, I was part of a few things, but not much. And um, I really regret that in retrospect, you know. I really wish I would have been part of theater and choir and clubs and I wish I had done that in my adult life, you know? Being part of a 12-step program was one of the only things I've ever been part of outside of my book club, and it's brought me a lot of joy. Um, and uh, when I got on YouTube, this whole community was unbelievable, you know? And <clears throat> I mentioned my vlog yesterday in the video, and uh, so there's a group on Facebook called uh, Peter's Peter Mon Vlogs, Vlogarinos. I did not start the group. Um, I was asked if it was okay if I started the group, if they started the group, and I was like, yeah, it's up to you guys. I'm not part of that. I'll comment in there. I'll be a member, but I'm not going to part on it, be part of it. And um, and there's also somebody, Elaine, that has started Peter's Drama Club. And um, both, you know, moderators from both of them reached out to me yesterday and asked if there was anything that they could do to help, which was so kind. But this Vlogarinos group is people that have... Um, met by just watching my vlog. It's nothing that I did. It's they comment to each other. And I just want to share a story in here and I ask him if I could share it. Koei, who lives in Florida, and he said that I could share this with you, so I'm going to share, share this with you, is trans and um, is very scared right now for his rights in Florida. And so he and his husband are moving to Las Vegas. And I was talking to him last night and I said... Um, because he had sent me something and so I was asking him about it. He was sent me something that he thought was maybe one of these people trying to find out some information about him or about me. And so, um, he was kind enough to reach out to me. And so, um, I called him and I said, and he was the one that if you guys have watched my Peter Does Stuff channel, he made me the beautiful, uh, lit display, um, of the thousand cranes. If you guys have ever seen that, um, because he wanted to, um, do something about me healing from the accident. It was just unbelievable. And he 
vlogged the whole journey on his channel and things like that. And so I asked him, I said, you know, like, I was asking him, like, you know, do you and your husband have jobs in Vegas and housing and things like that? And so he was telling me that Jesse, who was also part of the vlog group, the vloggerinos, that they become very, very close as a part of this group and um, that she was really, really helping him. <laughs> And that she was even allowing him to like use her garage for storage so they could send things out there before they moved and whatever. And I just like, I said to him, I said, like there were so many people in the vlog group last night that were saying that they were gonna leave because they were afraid because I had mentioned in my video that somebody out there was a part of these groups and they were in there silently just observing everything that had happened, which is true. And, um, and so there were a lot of people that were like, I'm leaving this group. Like, this doesn't feel safe to me anymore. And then there were so many comments underneath there and it made me so happy that people, and, and, and listen, I understand if you guys need to leave the group, you know? But there were so many people under there that was said, no, because if you do that, then they win. And this is what they want, right? Like, they're laughing at us or they're making fun of us behind the scenes. This is what they want, right? But like, we've come together. We've, we, we're, you know, we've un found unity over here. Like, we're not gonna do that. And the fact that two people that have helped each other in their lives out of something that I do just every single day by posting a vlog and that doesn't have anything to do with me that has to do with them right like that is so amazing to me and the fact that these friendships were built and relationships were built um you know out of a channel that I made just like on the spur of a moment to start vlogging like is unbelievable to me you know and the love and the support and the kindness that I have received through the years is just I mean it's you guys have no idea like it's nothing that I ever expected when I started my booktube channel seven years ago seven and a half years ago you know um so I just want to say I'm so thankful for your support and your love like it's unbelievable to me um and at the end of this, I want to share with you the most valuable lesson that I've learned from all of this. But first, I want to give you guys an update. Um, now, I'm going to read to you just exactly what I have written because I don't want to forget anything. Um, the channel that I talked about striking videos because they weren't under fair use have deleted their channel. Now, there's a lot of speculation about it being this person or it being about that person or about... The person has deleted their channel, okay? Completely deleted their channel. Um, they've also deleted their Twitter account. They've also deleted that I can see all of their other social media platforms. They are no longer following me on any social media platform, but I, I do believe that they have deleted all of their social media platforms under that name. So I, I'm very thankful for that. Um, but there are a few of their social media accounts that I do believe are theirs that are other people that are still following me. Um, so, okay. I'm very aware of who you are and I'm very aware of who you interact with because you guys don't follow each other but you respond to each other so there's no way you could see each other's I mean there's so first of all I'm a drama commentary channel this is what I do okay is like I go in and I look at people's sayings right so it's very easy to figure out when one person is acting as five so when you take down two accounts but you don't take down two accounts what it says to me is that you think that I don't know I know I know who all your accounts are okay I, I the 20 to 30 accounts that are out there I've been watching very closely there's been three that have been taken down so far okay and um or there's that person and then there's been, I think, three more that have been taken down. And one person was because when I mentioned that they were following my doctor and my family, what they did was they unfollowed my doctor and then they started following a bunch of back specialists all over the country. And I called it out on Twitter last night. And I said, oh, I see what you're doing. Okay, you've unfollowed my doctor. Well, it was in two separate tweets, but I basically said, you've unfollowed my doctor, but now you're following a bunch of other doctors, so when people will look at your account, they're gonna think it's not true, okay? Well, when I put that tweet out, they immediately unfollowed everybody, and then about 10 minutes later, they deleted their whole Twitter account. Two other people that are associated with the same person um, deleted their Twitter account too. So, um, and like I said, I'm very thankful for that. Um, but like, there still remain, um, several accounts that I believe are alternate accounts of these people. One of which, and I do believe this person is not connected to these people and they are alone, is the account who threatened me in DMs after the accident. Incidentally, they started their Twitter February of that year. Okay, my accident was February 16th. They started their <clears throat> Twitter account two days after that and then were threatening me in DMs and also at that time had a lot to say about my accident questioning it. They've also questioned a lot of things about um, 
my pancreatitis and weight loss and things like that. They're, they've, they literally have said at this moment in your video, you said this about your medical diagnosis, but at this point you said this, I'm confused, blah, 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 blah. I mean, they watch me so closely about my medical, it's disgusting, okay? It's really disgusting and they still have their account up. Um, and I still have their DMs for where they threaten me. And this is an account that I'm taking very, very seriously. So I want you to know that I see that your account is still up. Um, now what I want to say is that while I am extremely grateful that these actions have been taken and that they have deleted their Twitter accounts and the YouTube channel, because I was, I was going to strike the videos, okay? I was going to strike every video where they used my clips and what would ultimately happen would be that their channel was going to be taken down. So they beat me to the punch, but I really don't care. Um, it, it's, you know, it's kind of like that. Well, who broke up with who? Like, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm thankful that they took it down. I'm grateful for that, right? So, you know, uh, it's a beginning. Um, but it doesn't take away from what I went through whatsoever. This has been, I mean, that account specifically and this other account, I mean, there, there's like four accounts that like have been gunning for me for years on end, okay? And you guys, like yesterday, what I shared in the video was just the beginning of it. Like I said, there was three-fourths of stuff that I haven't even shared with you guys that I have documentation and evidence of that I didn't share in my video yesterday. You have no idea the lengths that these people have gone to to infiltrate my life. It's really, really scary, okay? Um, and like, while I'm extremely grateful for these actions, like I said, it still doesn't take away from what I went through. No one has reached out to me and apologized. No one has taken accountability for that. And you know, if this were me or one of my fellow drama channels, we would be demanded to make public and private apologies and have had to do that in the past, okay? So under, over m much lesser situations, much, much lesser situations, been demanded to correct ourselves in videos when we get one situation wrong or blah, 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 whatever, which we have done and taken responsibility for, right? So thank you for taking your Twitter and YouTube accounts down. Um, and I know that you're probably scared to reach out to me, um, because you're like, if I reach out and I make an apology to him, that's taking responsibility and whatever. Had you done that two or three days ago, my stance might have been different, but, you know, you didn't do that. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, and, uh... Anyway, uh, but they haven't done that. So just because they deleted their accounts does not mean that it's over. And I believe that at some point, these people will restart their accounts again or start other accounts and try to come for me in different ways. I really, truly believe that. And after talking to a police officer and an attorney, and an attorney um, I believe that that will continue to happen because that's what I've been told. Um, it is a beginning, but more needs to be done. And at some point, this will begin again, like I said. And speaking with a friend of mine who is a police officer, and I just want to say this, so many people yesterday said to me in the comment sections, you need to get an attorney, you need to report this, you need to, that had already been put, been put into motion. I have been talking to, so Alex and I have an attorney, first of all, okay? Um, and anybody out there, I'm just going to recommend this to you. No, I don't care if you're a public figure or if you're a YouTuber, if you're just a dude with a camera, I don't care who you are. You need to have a pup, a, an attorney that you consult with on a regular basis about things, okay? Just to run things by them. So anyway, we already had an attorney that had connected me with somebody else that specializes in these kinds of things. So I had already been talking to an attorney. But I also talked to a friend of mine that's a police officer. And, um, uh... Hold on a second. And my friend, who is a police officer, directed me to absolutely pursue this and take it very seriously for the safety of myself, my family, and my friends. I've been consulting with an attorney who will accompany me to the police department that I am compiling all the evidence that I have to give to this attorney um, that will accompany me to the police department to file a, a police report. And I will be working with my attorney on deciding what further actions to take going forward. Okay? I've also consulted... Um, with a private investigator just this morning that my attorney referred me to who specializes in cyber harassment investigations to help me identify who these people are. I don't care that they deleted their Twitter accounts. I don't care that they deleted their YouTube. The damage has been done. Thank you for starting to do that. Um, if it were me, like you accused me of two days ago, you would say I was running and hiding, okay? So thank you for taking down the accounts that have been um, aggravating me for years, but that's just the beginning of it, and the damage has been done already because you guys had those accounts up. You had a lot of people believing things that you were saying. You were hurting my reputation. You were defaming me, okay? Not to mention 
mention that many of you, if I find out that those sources were connected, were emailing people in my life, emailing family, emailing professionals that I work with. You were infiltrating personal areas of my life and it's very, very scary. So just because you take a Twitter account down doesn't mean that the harm hasn't been done. And I am going to pursue this legally, okay? Um, now, my attorney said that I could share these updates, but he then suggested that I stop talking about it and address it privately behind the scenes. So after this video today, I'm not going to be talking about this anymore for a while, okay? If something monumental happens, I will probably come out and share about it at some point, but for a while, um, under the advisement of my attorney, I will be handling this behind the scenes. Um... So there are so many professionals I've interacted with who these people have attempted to gain information from that just recently, um, the hospital that I was at for pancreatitis reached out to me and said that somebody was trying to obtain my medical records. That's pretty scary. Okay. I, I like, that's pretty scary. Um, now, there's a lot of information that I did not even mention because I want to hold on to specific information that only I knew, okay? From accounts that only I know that I haven't even referenced in my video, many of which have not taken down their accounts that I have seen, um, that I'm continuing to look at. And so I'm going to continue to track those people. Now my in attorney will have that information and so will the private investigator and then I will be filing a police report, like I said. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of information that I haven't shared shared on here because I want to be the only one that knows about that with especially with the exception of the people that I'm working with um so that they like can't run and hide from that anymore because I'm tired of it <laughs> uh, this is very very serious and goes much deeper than even anything that I discussed in my video yesterday and that being said I think that what I discussed in my video yesterday was pretty serious um and I'm probably going to get emotional when I talk about this next part that being said I've learned a very valuable lesson and I was reminded of this late last night as I was listening um, to one of my all-time favorite songs, um, Both Sides Now by Joni Mitchell. And, you know, one of my very, if not my earliest memory as a kid was dancing around a Christmas tree when my parents were still together and they were listening to um, Judy Collins' version of Both Sides Now. And so I listened to it last night because I love the Joni Mitchell live version that she did a couple years ago, you know. And, um... I've looked at life from both sides now. Anyway, um, I was reminded of what was really important. Many people have said, Peter, don't share so many. I'm going to stop this before it stops because I want to make sure I get into this. Hold on a second because I'm almost at the end. Okay. Because before I get into this, I want to... Um, I want to make sure that I say, uh, I've looked at life from both sides now, from win or lose and still somehow it's life's illusions I recall. I really don't know life at all. Many people said to me yesterday that I shouldn't share so many personal things and that I need to protect myself. In September, I will, have, I will be celebrating seven years on this channel. At the end of this year, I will have completed seven years of pretty consistent vlogging with the exception of when I was gone after the accident, when PP passed away, and during the time of my pancreatitis. I have six channels. I've laughed. I've cried. Like I said, I've cried a lot. And I've shared stories of my life. Of my mom. Summers with my dad. My recovery. Our dogs. Their passings trips that we've taken, my relationships with my husband, my cousin and my best friend, my love of books, movies, and TV shows, and all of the memories of my life. I've shared that all. My videos are literally a living scrapbook of my life. And you, all of you out there, have allowed me to share that. To allow this old man to have a moment. 
if my stomach turns because I'm hungry. Allow this old man to have a moment. I have made so many incredible friends by making videos and having book clubs. And in return of all of this, so many of you have shared so many stories of your lives with me. And that is priceless. It is a gift that I never expected on May 11th of 2016 when I sat down to film my very first booktube video. I never expected this ever in a million years. I get to get up every single day, every single day, even on vacation, and people ask me why I make videos on vacation. I get to get up every single day and do something that I absolutely love. And that is because of you guys out there. Not because of me, that's because of you. And that is something that I would not trade even at the expense of this horrible, horrible situation. And no one, no one will steal my joy of making videos and sharing stories of my life in my daily vlog and in my other videos. So as scary as it is, it, I will continue to share stories of my life because that's what I do. I'm a storyteller, just a dude with a camera. And I feel so incredibly blessed for this opportunity. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving me this gift. I am forever grateful. And I'm not going anywhere. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.